All right, in this video, we are going to talk about the Hoffman and the Cope elimination reactions. And what we're going to see in both of these reactions, we go from an amine, we convert the functional group of an amine into an alkene. So we're going to break carbon-nitrogen bonds to form alkenes in both the Hoffman and the Cope elimination. So on this slide, we will um, kind of compare both of these elimination reactions to see the similarity similarities that we have and some of the differences. And then again we'll do another example on the next slide to demonstrate um, another difference between the two reactions. So first let's start with the Hoffman elimination. You see here we're starting with a um, tertiary amine and you don't always have to start with a tertiary amine. You could start with a primary amine and then in step one react this with methyl iodide in excess, but in this case we do have a tertiary methyl amine. So you may see examples where this is a primary amine and then this reacts with excess of methyl iodide. Um, but let's just go through our mechanism and see what happens here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a lone pair on our nitrogen. We know that nitrogen can act as a good base or also as a good nucleophile. And in step one, we're adding a good electrophile. And essentially, we're doing an SN2 reaction where the nitrogen will attack the methyl group and kick out our I. And the consequence of that reaction is we're going to form a new bond from our nitrogen to an additional methyl group. So we had two methyl groups to start, now we have a third. The consequence of this action is this amine is now a quaternary amine, four bonds to carbon, and therefore has a positive charge. Looking at the second step, we now treat this with silver oxide, water, and heat. And this is one set of conditions we could use to do this. And essentially what happens is silver oxide, water, and heat is really generating OH minus. So there are examples you'll see where actually in step two you can just add sodium hydroxide as well. So if you look what we've done now is in fact this quaternary ammonium salt is a very good leaving group. So in step two, we're going to add a base. Silver oxide and water produces sodium hydroxide. That is going to act as a base to deprotonate, kick off, form an alkene, and kick off our leaving group. The key thing we have to remember here is that I really have two choices. I can deprotonate a set of hydrogen or a hydrogen on the left side, which is the more substituted carbon, or a grab a hydrogen from the right side, which is the least substituted carbon. And in the Hoffman elimination, you're always going to deprotonate a hydrogen from the least substituted side or the side that has more hydrogens. So our sodium hydroxide here, let's draw that in. So we'll draw our OH minus. That's going to act as a base, and we're always going to deprotonate the side that has more hydrogens. This is the side that the carbon is less substituted. So let's draw in our arrows. A lone pair will form a new bond to the hydrogen. The carbon-hydrogen bond will break, forming our alkene, and that is going to eliminate off our nitrogen. And that's really it. So here we're doing an elimination step and that gets us to our final product which is simply an alkene. And what you'll notice here is we are forming the least substituted alkene, and that is the product you see with the Hoffman elimination. So we started with a tertiary amine with attached to four carbons, and now we still have those four carbons, but we formed our alkene. 
Additionally, what we can do is write the other side product that we get. Normally, we're not concerned with this, but this is the other product that we form is trimethylamine. But the point of this reaction is to really form our alkene. So what we need to remember from the Hoffman elimination is we form the less substituted alkene. This alkene is not the most stable alkene, and that's the product formed presumably due to steric factors from these um, three methyl groups. All right, so let's take a look now at the COPE elimination and see what those differences are. We can see that our reagents are slightly different in this example. Here we're starting with a tertiary amine. And for this reaction, you do in fact need to start with a tertiary amine. Um, this won't um, work as well if you start with a primary amine. So normally with a COPE, you do see a tertiary amine. So the first thing we're going to see is we're going to treat this with MCPBA. And we've seen MCPBA used before in different ways, taking ketones to esters and doing epoxidation reactions. But in this case, what's going to happen is MCPBA is going to actually oxidize our nitrogen. Let's give ourselves a little more room here. So we still have our bond to N. We have our two methyl groups. And then the N is now oxidized to what we call an N oxide. And in an N oxide, the nitrogen again is quaternary and has a positive charge. And now our oxygen has a single bond and three lone pairs, and therefore our O has a negative charge and we call this an N oxide. Now we can move on to our second step. So our, when our N oxide is treated with heat, a very similar reaction is going to occur. Again, this is going to happen um, at the carbon that is attached, that is least substituted, so the carbon that is attached to the most hydrogens. So this could either happen the carbon on the right or the carbon on the left. The carbon on the left is more substituted than the carbon on the right. Carbon on the right has more hydrogens, and that's where we're going to do our elimination. In the Hoffman elimination, we had a different base, OH- come and take that hydrogen away to do our elimination. In the example of the COPE, we have an intramolecular elimination. And we can draw those arrows as such. The OH, the OH, I'm sorry, the O minus of the N oxide is going to take one of the H's away. I now break that carbon hydrogen bond to form a our carbon carbon bond, and then I break the carbon nitrogen bond and that will form our product. So what we can do is draw our product and what you're going to see here is that our product is exactly the same. Again we form an alkene. This is the less stable alkene. It's the less substituted alkene and less stable and that is the main product we form. And then again we can kind of draw the other byproduct we form here, which is hydroxylamine. Typically we don't need to um, draw our hydroxylamine as a product because we will purify that out. The main product that we're interested in this reaction is again forming the alkene that we see here. So comparing these two reactions, in both of these reactions, you form the less substituted alkene. So this alkene is less stable than if we took the hydrogens from the other side. 
Um, the other thing we see in comparing these is now a, another, a different molecule, OH- acts as our base. Here we have an intramolecular, the N oxide acts as our base to do our elimination. All right, so let's just do another example here so we can um, designate a couple of differences. So what we're going to do again, start with the Hoffman elimination. Um, same thing, the nitrogen will alkylate to do our attack, and we can draw again our five-membered ring. So here I've indicated some stereochemistry that we have. So we have an ethyl group on a wedge. Now our quaternary ammonium salt is also on a wedge. And then on the other side, we now have a methyl group on a dash. So looking at this example, we now to need to really identify the hydrogens that we can take away. And there's no difference in substitution, so I'm going to just draw in the hydrogens. So here we have a hydrogen back and here I have a hydrogen coming forward. So we really have two options here. And I picked this example on purpose because I want to demonstrate a difference between these two reactions. So if we remember from previous eliminations, the key for an elimination is that the hydrogen that we're going to deprotonate away must be anti to our leaving group. And in a ring, this is clearly shown that the hydrogen attached to the carbon with the ethyl is anti to the nitrogen. The other hydrogen is syn to the nitrogen. So for this reaction to take place, we have to deprotonate the hydrogen that is anti. So in the Hoffman elimination, our hydrogen that we're taking away must be anti. The previous example was acyclic, so the molecule could rotate to form a, to put the hydrogen in the anti position. So in the previous example, when it's acyclic, you really don't have to worry about this as much because the molecule can rotate, so the H is in the anti position. But now we have a ring. So our hydroxyl group has to take away a hydrogen that is anti, that kicks out or forms the double bond, which then kicks out our nitrogen. And the consequence of this elimination here we're going to form our five-membered ring. We now have put our alkene here. Therefore, we have no stereochemistry on the carbon that's attached to our ethyl group. So we have to remember that here we no longer have a stereo center, so this is a straight line, no longer a wedge. But the, at the other side, we have not touched this stereochemistry, so our methyl is still back. And this is the product we get when we take our ring and do our Hoffman elimination. So let's compare what happens with our COPE elimination. Again, when this molecule reacts with MCPBA, we're also going to form a five-membered ring. We still have that same stereochemistry. So our ethyl is up, our nitrogen is up, and now we've formed an N oxide.
that O has a minus, our nitrogen has a plus, and we have this methyl group down here. So again, I can draw in my hydrogens as we did before. And the hydrogen at the bottom is coming towards us. And now what we see is that because we have we don't have another molecule coming in, we have an intramolecular elimination because the nitrogen is up. Now with the COPE elimination, my hydrogen also must be up. So in the Hoffman elimination, the hydrogen had to be anti. In the COPE elimination, the hydrogen must be syn. So let's draw our arrows here. A lone pair is going to come and attack that hydrogen. This will now kick down to form our alkene and kick out our hydroxyl amine. So the product we get out here is again a five-membered ring. Our alkene is now here, so we've lost the stereochemistry for the carbon attached to our methyl group. Our nitrogen is gone, and that stereochemistry of our ethyl group remains untouched. And that's the final product we get in this example doing the COPE elimination. Again, I didn't write the side products in these, but let me just go ahead and do that. Right, so the other product we add here is, and normally you don't need to include these, trimethylamine. And here the other side product we form is the hydroxylamine. So normally we don't really need to show these in our final products because we're more concerned for the longer chain, but they are formed. And the key piece of information that we have to remember here is with the Hoffman elimination that our hydrogen has to be anti. The hydrogen must be anti for the Hoffman elimination. And the other thing that we have to remember for our COPE elimination is that our H must be syn. And really this only plays a role when we're talking about cyclic examples. If it's acyclic, the hydrogens can rotate to be anti or syn freely, but when we form rings, as in this case here, H must be anti to get our alkene here. Here, our hydrogen has to be syn to get our alkene there. So that is one of the main differences between the Hoffman and Cope elimination. Again, both products react in amine to an alkene. They form the less substituted alkene, but for the Hoffman, the H must be anti, and for the Cope elimination, the hydrogen must be syn. Okay, for your homework, what I want you to do is this. I've drawn in a tertiary amine. I want you to form an alkene here. So all you need to do is list the reagents you need to convert this tertiary amine into an alkene. And obviously you have to choose the right type of elimination, either the Hoffman or the Cope, to get the correct product.